Hi, this is a video to show off the new scatter module from Microsplat. If you're familiar with the advanced detail module that uh, was on the store, um, this is sort of a replacement for that. It's a different system, um, but the author of that module has uh, left the asset store and I haven't been able to get in touch with him for over a year. Uh, so I figured I would write a uh, new module that would uh, do something similar uh, because it had some people who really loved it and uh, seemed like a, a decent hole to fill. So what this module lets you do is paint an extra layer of textures on top of your terrain. And these can be blended to the terrain in certain ways that you couldn't do in, in a splat map situation. So for instance, I've added some leaves onto the ground here, and I've added this moss onto the top of these rocks. And that would be very hard to do with a splat map. Uh, I would have to duplicate textures and make different versions of them and blend into those. And so it would be uh, a lot less modular than this is, and I, it would be a lot harder to have a lot of um, a lot of these types of effects. So the way this works is that you enable uh, scatter here, and once you do this, you get some new options in your material. You get a scatter diffuse and normal uh, smoothness AO map uh, arrays that you can plug in your textures to, and you get a global UV scale. And then you have these uh, per texture properties here for those textures. So I only have two textures in here right now. And the per texture properties are right here. The reason that they're not in the per texture property section is because these are the textures on the terrain and these are for the scatter materials. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the per texture properties here and what they do. Um, obviously you can have per texture UV scale and then the alpha mo modifier uh, a multiplier lets you uh, basically just ramp in and out uh, the alpha value. So if I turn that on, we'll recompile the shader. And we can fade our leaves in and out with this and make them stronger or softer. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, the blend mode is perhaps unique, uh, the most unique thing here. And there are basically four blend modes available. There's alpha, which is basically just for the, these leaves, you just want to use an alpha texture and you want to blend it over the terrain. Really simple. Alpha clip is what I'm using actually on the leaves, and I'll explain that in a section in a, in a, in a second. Overlay is like overlay blend mode in Photoshop, and lighter color uh, chooses the lightest of the two colors to show through. Um, these are great for uh, things where you want to kind of blend the texture into the previous texture, have the colors and the normals. Um, you know, affect each other uh, instead of uh, interpolating from one set of uh, texture inputs to the other, uh, like you would with an, an alpha overlay. So alpha clip, let's talk about that. Um, the What that does is it uses the alpha um, uh, in the texture to control uh, how, uh, which sections of the texture shine through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to the diffuse map here for the alpha clip and I'm going to look at the alpha channel and what you'll see here is that each leaf has a different alpha value and so to create this what I did was adjust all the alpha values of each leaf uh, and then I posterized it in, the, uh, in Photoshop and what that did was give it uh, in my case 16 unique levels for each leaf, okay? And as we paint on this terrain, we have an alpha value as we paint. And so when we paint very low alpha, it will only show the leaves which are um, uh, the brightest leaves on the um, texture. And when we paint uh, really strongly with, with a high opacity amount, or rather uh, a solid you know, amount, we'll get more leaves. And so I'm going to go over to the painter here. I'm going to select my terrain. I'm going to show you how that works. So this is the uh, new unified paint system in Microsplat, where we have all the maps, uh, or all the types of things we can paint. And now there's a new scatter section here. And the paint controls are what you would expect. Uh, and then you can choose which texture you're going to paint. And so in my case, I want to paint the leaves and the target opacity. So if I turn the target opacity way down and paint, uh, you'll see that now I get less leaves. 
right? And if I turn the opacity up a little bit, I get a few more leaves. And if I turn it all the way up, I will get all the leaves. So what we're able to do here is create a brush that, that uh, controls the density of the scatter um, via this alpha channel. And one thing to note about uh, that alpha channel is that it's best to do it without any anti-aliasing because if you have anti-aliasing on when you're doing those alpha values, you're going to get different alpha values on the edge. So you really want a crisp edge uh, when you're setting up that texture. Uh, but it's a cool trick and it allows us to, um, you know, get more variability out of a single texture. So next I'm going to talk about the height and slope filters. And one thing you'll notice about the painter is that uh, we have a copy of the per texture properties right here. Um, I did this because it's very useful to edit this stuff uh, while you're painting and adjust it. And flipping back to the material constantly to do it uh, was just very cumbersome. I mean, it, it worked, but it's cumbersome. And so uh, by exposing it here, it just is a little bit easier to work with. So let's go to our second texture, which is this moss texture. And I can paint this down. And uh, one thing you will notice about painting on this is that if I paint the other texture, it kind of deletes uh, the other one from that area. And that's because there is only, um, this uses the technique I use in Mega Splat, and so there's only one splat map for everything. Uh, and in that splat map, we store a texture index and then an opacity. And uh, so we only have one layer, whereas Mega Splat has multiple layers. And that's just for performance reasons and practicality that, you know, it's it's not really that useful to compute multiple layers of this stuff so that you could blend and have like leaves over moss um, because most of the time you're just looking to put one thing down like leaves under a tree or moss on the top of the stones or whatever you're doing uh, so this keeps the effect really really cheap um and uh and you know makes it all affordable and is is good enough for uh what this module needs to be so essentially when you paint um you know, a texture in the area, it's going to uh, choose only one of those textures. It's going to, whichever one you painted last is going to be the one that wins, and uh, it's going to use that opacity value. So, back to slope and height. I have these enabled, and right now I have a slope filter, I mean, sorry, a height filter that starts at 0.61 and ends at 1. So, if I move this down, you'll see that it occupies uh, lower areas on the height map right so that's kind of my thresholding and um, obviously if I move the top down it's going to clear the tops um, and there's a little trick with these filters which is if I invert them so let's do one here and let's do 0 0.5 here we can see we just we now have created a filter that goes the other way where um, I can put this only in the bottom okay instead of Having it, uh, if I did this the other way, five and one, um, and then I adjust it, you'll see that it, it, it's top down essentially, right? So this lets you decide, um, you know, where this texture appears based on the underlying height map. And then we get the exact same thing for the slope. And I'm just going to set this to zero so it's everywhere and we can just see the slope filter. And so we can basically clear this off of. Um, areas where uh, the slope is more and that's based on the normal map it's not based on the world slope so it's not going to appear more on say um, you know uh, overall terrain slopes versus um, flats in the terrain it's going to appear based on the texture uh, the normal map and so what this is really useful uh, that I find it useful for is just adding a bit of contextual noise into that filtering that we can then combine with our height filtering to kind of give it some, you know, some kind of little details there of, of it growing kind of only in certain areas. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically the module. Uh, the other thing I need to show you is how to pack the texture arrays. So if we go into the directory here in the example folder, there's a scatter config. And if I want to create a new config, I can just right click, do create, and then go to microsplat and select texture array config and give it some name. 
and then that will give me a blank texture array config and up here in the texturing mode you can now set it to scatter and so that lets you um, pack the arrays required for a scatter map and you'll notice here that when we're in scatter map mode we get a diffuse normal and alpha instead of a height map smoothness and AO okay and uh, that lets you specify your alpha channel um, and you have all your other PBR inputs and you click update like you would and it'll spit out these uh, diffuse and normal SAO arrays for our scatter maps and then we just assign those uh, to the scatter section in our material right here um, so yeah this is uh, it's pretty cool for detailing it's uh, it's a little bit like a decal system if you use one of those it has some advantages and disadvantages one of the nice things about decal systems is that you can uh, you know, orientate those things any way you want. You can, uh, you know, put them on walls. There's all kinds of like cool tricks you can do with decal systems. But the disadvantage is that they're a separate system. They often require either deferred rendering or forward rendering, uh, depending on how they're written, and have very different performance characterizations, uh, depending on whether you're in forward or deferred. Uh, and they can be quite expensive to draw in some of those uh, cases. They can be done efficiently. Um, but having a scene layered with thousands and thousands of decals can be quite expensive unless you're doing something like virtual texturing to bake them all down. Uh, but this is done entirely in the terrain shader. Um, it generates one uh, scatter map, which is based on the resolution of your terrain. Uh, and that's, you can see here the green, that's the opacity of the area that I painted. Um, so, uh, and then in, in the shader, um, it what it does is it samples... Uh, this this control map um, using a little gather read so it basically just reads the the four values of the pixel um, three actually but uh, and then it takes that and reconstructs uh, very centric coordinates and figures out what the um, the textures uh, of these three samples it needs and samples the uh, those three textures for the given triangle and blends them together. Um, so it's fairly cheap. It costs, uh, for diffuse plus normal map, um, uh, normal SAO map, it takes um, six texture samples and then um, three of the control. But the three control samples are kind of done as um, one uh, because they're neighboring, so they're cache coherent. Um, so it's pretty quick um, and should be, you know, good for, for relatively low end. Uh, the other thing it does is when branch samples is enabled, it only bothers to sample those six uh, texture samples uh, for the areas that have been painted. So when you get out over here and you are trying to, um, you know, you're measuring performance or whatever, uh, it's going to sample the control map out here and then early out. So it won't cost you uh, very much. It'll just be one sample into the control map and you're done. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, hope you like it and uh, it'll be on the asset store um, when they approve it. So thanks.